Hello. I uh, hope every, everyone is okay. Um, really happy to welcome you on this uh, new track, new session dedicated to Africa. And we, of course, without any cliche, we know that, I know that in Africa, there are a lot of innovators, innovation, low technologies, great idea, collective intelligence we're going to, to speak about. But uh, this, uh, this morning, we want to, to shake and to wake up uh, everybody in this room, um, starting with a, with a pitch. Uh, Amira Chignot from CBEX, welcome uh, in, uh, in Paris. Uh, you're from Tunisia. Yes, and thank you so much. And Nicolas Metro from uh, Kinome, which is a Japanese name, but uh, you are very focused in Africa. Welcome to you. Uh, so let's let's start the exercise to to pitch in one minute and asking answering some questions in a, in very short term. We would think it's really uh, really great for you to interact a lot. So let's start with you, Amira. If you're okay from CBEX, can you pitch CBEX? Yes. So as we know that scarcity and misuse of resources are continuously increasing farming costs and having a negative impact on yields. CBEX, it's a combination of a data-driven platform and proprietary IoT customer-centric solution that help farmers to fully automate operations like irrigation and fertigation, measuring the impact, and continuously improving the way they are doing it. It's more than this. It's an agri-hub that will connect farmers to experts, agronomic experts. They will be able to share their algorithms and monetize them. And also, it's the source for governments and NGOs to have real-time data and statistics and prepare for strategic solutions for the agriculture issues and water usage for the future. Thank you. Wow, that's great. Less than one minute. Can, you, can we uh, have some applause for Big Up for uh, Amira? What a pitch. <laughs> That's great. Um, so may maybe we, we, should, uh, we should take some questions after because uh, it's, it's great to follow with you, Nicolas Metro from Kinome. Uh, so you have one, mino one minute sorry, to pitch Kinome. What's, what's Kinome exactly? Thank you, Marion. Good morning to all. Very happy to be with you. I founded Kinome in 2005, 14 years ago. Kinome means eye of the tree in Japanese. And our job is to leverage on our ally and bigger brother, the tree, to improve daily lives, to create good life, as we're discussing here. And that means better nutrition with moringa trees, for example, that means better access to water, that means better adaptation to, to climate with acacia trees, and so on and so forth, starting from the needs of people and not with preconceived solutions. In order to do that, we combine under the same roof activities which are usually working in silos. Scientific research, consulting, projects, and education. And with all of that together, and a lot of partners focusing on what can make a real change to people's lives, we've managed to create good life for two million people in 30 countries, mostly in Africa, in the last 14 years. That's great. <laughs> Thank you, Nicola. And we're also waiting for uh, Venia Ariel uh, Awansu from uh, Key Medicals. She's, uh, she's coming in uh, maybe in a few minutes and join us. She's from Benin and she has a great project based in Benin, Africa, of course. Back to, uh, uh, to CBEX, a very interesting uh, project uh, you lead now in Tunisia. Can you, can you tell us what is, what is um, in terms of, you know, for, for a cultural point, from a cultural point of view, sorry, what, what is the uh, the state of art of agriculture out there, and why uh, did you did you start with CBEX? Uh, of course, we imagine it's to solve uh, pain points out there, but can can you can you just tell us more about agriculture at large in Tunisia? Uh, as you know, that we are coming from a continent where 60% uh, of the life of people there. Uh, is relying on agriculture. Like 60% of people in Tunisia and Africa uh, working in agriculture, so it's the main source of living. Um, uh, three years ago, we in Tunisia we have passed by a drought uh, period, so we we've lived the the pain of of, uh, of farmers uh, carrying all the water all the days, and um, uh, we we've tried to find solutions. We've said that like actually. 
technology can be a solution in order to help these farmers to better use water resources because they are limited in the amount of using to irrigate. And when we say water, it's a source of life, the source of food. So um, we've tried to find, to give them for example, um, um, consultancy or advices in real time. So then we, we find that there is no tools to help us to get real-time data. So we've started by doing the hardware parts. Yeah. <laughs> the exercises. I forgot easy. the one minute. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, of course, feel free uh, here to ask questions to Nicola, uh, Amira, and, and uh, next to, uh, uh, to Venia. Nicola, one of the question, maybe from the public, do you want to ask uh, a question from to to Nicola? Okay, otherwise I'm going to ask you. Uh, Kinome, what about reforestation? We discussed, you know, previously uh, before starting the exercise. We we talk about reforestation, you know, planting old trees. That's beautiful uh, to to uh, maybe to make you know all the buildings collapsing, replacing by trees. That's really great, but. This is not only the option. Sometimes it it uh, it affects biodiversity. C can you uh, can you react on the, on that point? Yes. Let's start from the basics. We cannot live without trees and forests, and we cannot, as a species, human beings, live without a lot of forest. Number one. Number two. Deforestation, the disappearance of trees, continues at a large scale, despite all the initiatives and efforts. So we need to replace these trees, but we, knew, we need to do it in a way that is sustainable. And the only way to make it sustainable is to plant trees that serve people's lives. Otherwise, they get eaten by goats in Tunisia or, 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 you know, or burned by wildfires and so on. So we need to start from the people, see how we can improve their lives thanks to trees, and therefore reforestation becomes just a way to lead a better life. Now, this being said, reforestation never equates, never adds up to all the benefits of original forests. So we also have to do conservation and preservation of our forests. 80% of all species come from forests. Half of anti-cancer medicines come from forests, and so on and so forth. So we need to do both. Great. Well, the, you, you managed in, in the best way. Huh? Thank you. <laughs> um, another question, if... Uh, at from the from you audience, if there is one question to Nicola uh, or Amira, they, they are shy t t this morning. Come on, we need you. <laughs> um, Amira, uh, le let's talk about Africa at large. Uh, this is exactly what what uh, we are talking about. Is this some some specific? You, you know that everybody is saying okay in Africa because there is nothing at all basically. Uh, no, no technology, no computing, uh, no, nothing really as mature as, as we can find you know, here in Europe. Uh, is it a cliche or is it something that you feel concretely? And do you have any example that can, you know, uh, can, can, we, uh, can be adapti adapted in a way? Saying that uh, in Africa there is no technology, it's not really true because there is some countries, they go in like for world like let's say Tunisia, Rwanda, Ethiopia. So these, these countries now are doing, like they are the example for the other uh, African countries. Um, let's say the mindset is really changing. So um, now we found that, for example, in Tunisia three years ago, we found that the former is not really um, um, used to use technology. This is true. So this is a sector that's really far from technology. We see machinery, but we don't see technology like, like IoT, like artificial intelligence, which is not really, uh, um, um, which is not really uh, true for them. So this is what we try to do in Tunisia. We do awareness sessions. We talk with them. We try to make them, like, give them the information in a very easy way in order to say that technology no today is a solution for you. This is working together with also that, as he said, Nicolas, like collective intelligence, with people who have the knowledge of agriculture and the expertise of the agriculture. 
That, that means uh, when I, I ask the question, no technology in Africa, of course not, but not so many investments exactly. ah, to support yeah. the technology uh, development. That's what I mean, exactly. Thanks. Marion, sorry. Hey, we have a question hey. from our yeah, activators. Sure. Um, and this is for, for both of you. Um, how do you choose which geographical area you're going to focus in on when there are so many different local needs across each country and the continent? We start from the issue. As I said, at Kinome, we bring under one roof many things together. And we do that because only a global answer can meet a global challenge. So we need research, consulting, projects, and education. And in order, in order to make that efficient, we pick up paradigm shifts. For example, we work on cocoa a lot. The reason for that is that the average age of a cocoa farmer in Ivory Coast is 53, my age. The life expectancy is 58. Hopefully, I've got more years. All of their boys, we usually take over the farm. I've gone to Abidjan. So there's no future for these people. On the other hand, most chocolate makers know who they are going to sell the chocolate in the next 20 years, because Chinese, Russians, Indians eat a lot, a lot more chocolate than before. But they're not sure they're going to have chocolate because of climate change, because of deforestation. So we're bringing all these corporates, scientists, NGOs, local farmers together to reinvent a new paradigm, a new way to grow cocoa that is good for everybody. That's the way we pick up the places where we work. Right. You, you, let me ask another question and one minute answer, of course, as you now know. Um, we, we just have talked about artificial intelligence, which is probably one of the, you know, a way for Africa to, uh, to be, of course, more in emancipated. But you, you better, you prefer talking about collective intelligence, which is super powerful uh, and maybe, m maybe more powerful than artificial intelligence. Can you explain? I think one doesn't exclude the other. Collective intelligence gives a meaning to technology, any technology, AI, you know, blockchain, whatever. I think the one fundamental question that we have to ask ourselves, whatever our field of intervention is, what is it about at the end of the day? Why do I plant trees? Why do I have had this platform? Why do I develop AI programs? Does it serve the needs of people? We're using a very powerful tool called ethical leadership. Ethical leadership is about innovating in meeting the fundamental needs of people. These needs, the seven of them, are the same everywhere you go. If AI serves security, health, respect, inclusion, balance, access to knowledge and self-realization, great. If it doesn't, let's reconsider. And that's the same with all technologies. So we need to marry, to combine hard technologies with soft technologies, hard sciences, with social sciences to make sure that happens, that we meet the people's needs in the field, in Africa in particular. Sure, fully agree. Huh? <laughs> um, about the data, uh, back to, to, to CBEX, and, and this is very interesting because we're close to the topic with AI. Um, once we extract the data, uh, the, 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 the issue for for, uh, for the, your, your players on the, on the platform is not only to, to collect the data, okay, I have the data, uh, this is great. No, this is the value of the data and what should be the, the use, the usage of this data. Can you explain how uh, the platform with all the data collected um, from the field is now a, a new power, you know, in Tunisia for all the, the people uh, you, 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 you tackle with the platform? Yes, of course. So let's say, uh, let's start by the actors, actor by actor, so, uh, or people who are, ser whom we are serving uh, by the platform. So first the farmer, so with, for the farmer now we are, for example, um, helping them to increase the yield by 30%. We, ha we are helping them to uh, reduce water resources and uh, bills of electricity by 20% and more focusing on business than uh, operations. Uh, for the um, experts and agronomics, uh, they have algorithms, but they haven't the possibility to train them or to offer them to farmers in a very scale, 
uh, uh, approach. So we offer them the platform to monetize and to train their algorithms uh, according to the impact, measuring the impact in real time, the, um, uh, how, like um, how much the farmer has irrigated, the need of the, of the plants in terms of water and fertilizers, and also we ha are helping the governments to map the production across the continent, depending on the exportation and the import of our needs or our plantation. That's great. Any question from, the, from you? Come on, don't be shy. So, if I just understand, did, did you uh, hear correctly? What about the, the future? How do we work in 10 years, correct? We work together. We work together. What's, what's really missing in this world is, is more collaboration. And that's one of the things that trees can, can teach us. Because trees, and like me and you, haven't had to walk from a lot, you know, have not been able to walk to come here or, or, or to get fed. They need to develop collaborations. They need to develop chemistry facilities to develop as they stand. We need to do the same. Just give you an example, 15 other social entrepreneurs and myself, all Ashoka Fellows, we've created the first sub-regional cooperative working on nutrition in Africa. We're coming from eight different countries, uh, in, you know, ranging from Nigeria to, uh, to Senegal, through Mali, Cameroon, and so on. We all come from different perspectives on nutrition. By sharing, just getting together, you know, Lawrence producing plantain chips in Nigeria, got the inspiration from me that he should put moringa leaves in his plantain chips to increase the nutritional benefits. And that also interests Desiree, who's selling honey in, in Burkina because moringa flowers feed his bees. And Lawrence, in, 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 in turn, is using his distribution system to sell his products in another country. That's what we need to do. Break down silos, have corporates working with NGOs, with with scientific institutes, with individuals, with everybody else. We have the solutions. We just need to share them. And that's the paradigm shift. That's what we need. Core business is good, but, but it's not the solution of the future. Combining core businesses to a global change of uniting forces. And we've got all the means. We've got, we've got the internet. We've got globalization. That's the good size of globalization. Let's share much more, and we'll solve the bigger problems together. That's actually the only way to do it, I believe. I must say that the question is uh, is, is for, for you, uh, I, do I, I guess, also. Yes, I do agree with Nicolas. Actually, um, according to our experience in Tunisia with the precision agriculture, we say that technology alone is not enough. So we do uh, believe in the collective intelligence. We do believe in the collaborat collaboration between all the actors. Now in Tunisia, for example, last week we've been uh, able to conclude a, a partnership, like a eunuch in, in, in its gen gender, like the, it's a premier in Tunisia, uh, between technology and, uh, um, and stakeholders in the agriculture sector, between the governments, the ministry, the uh, NGOs, the uh, technical centers, etc. So combine the technology with the knowledge would be the force to be able to solve uh, issues in many uh, other sectors. So I think this example, if we duplicate it in other, to other sectors, we will be able to solve our problems efficiently and very quickly. And maybe to answer you uh, on the discussion, maybe we should say in 10 years uh, and see uh, maybe uh, on newspaper, it's time to copy Africa. <laughs> That's probably what we, we could expect. Thank you so much. Uh, sorry for, for uh, our third speaker, Venia, uh, from Key Medicals of Covena. If you come, you are so... Please, so welcome on this stage, Christelle. Thank you, Marion. Yes, and in fact, you can catch up with Marion and all of our speakers during the hubs, during the lunch break. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you everybody.